Hello and welcome to this very special show that we've put together ahead of Women's Day on Money Control. We're calling this Dreams Unlimited because we're going to bring you the startup stories of three women entrepreneurs in India from three very diverse fields. They've really managed to blaze a trail and run some of the hottest startups in the country today in three very different fields. I'm going to let them talk about their journey, but uh, let me briefly introduce them. We have uh, Dr. Geeta Manjunath, who is the founder and CEO of Niramai Health Analytics. Uh, we have Lizzie Chapman, who's the co-founder and CEO of Zest Money. And we have Vinita Singh, who's the co-founder and CEO of Sugar Cosmetics. So I said three very different areas. There's health, there's AI, there's fintech, and there's D2C, which is the hottest thing in online commerce today. Thank you very much, all three of you, for being part of Money Control's Women's Day celebration, uh, for sharing your experiences. So, uh, Dr. Gita, let me start with you. From starting sure. up to scaling up to running Niramai today, take us through your experience. How difficult or easy is it to run an enterprise, a startup in India today? Sure. Um, you know, I'm basically an uh, accidental entrepreneur, I can say, where uh, I was a technologist or researcher in an international lab. Uh, of course, I was a lab director uh, in uh, um, uh, earlier companies like Hewlett Packard and Xerox and so on. And uh, that is when, uh, you know, I was actually working with multiple uh, doctors, um, um, you know, for uh, healthcare related innovation, um, as well as, uh, you know, educationists to come up with some education related um, innovations, custom care, and so on and so forth. And on that time, one of my cousin sisters got detected with breast cancer. And I, at that time, really um, saw what that uh, disease can do to the family and to the whole, uh, you know, uh, extended family around. You know, it's, it's extremely shocking when you lose a, a simple friend who's been with you all the time. And similarly, another instance happened in the family. And, and I said, okay, as uh, uh, innovators and technologists, like why are we solving some global problem like in the US or Europe? There's, there's this uh, huge uh, issue that is right in front of us. Uh, 600,000 women die every year. And so on. So that is when I quit my job and started this four years ago. It's been a great uh, learning, I would say, uh, you know, every day, uh, to say the least. And uh, so, so it's been uh, a lot of fun and all that to come up with this new method of detecting breast cancer and trying to sort of, you know, um, quote unquote, sell it to the doctor saying, uh, you know, this is really something you've never read before, but still it works. And you have to, you know, subs uh, you know prescribe to your, um, uh, you know, patients and so on and so forth. So, so it's a long journey of clinical validation, product validation, product market fit, and also figuring out what pricing needs to be done and uh, making sure that the ladies love it and all of that. So, so it's, it's just a long journey. Um, now, uh, thankfully, we have this installed in 70 plus hospitals in 15 cities of India with uh, more than 33,000 women who have gone through this test and also a lot of uh, international clearances as well. So uh, we have a long way to go, but it's been a great journey so far. Right, that, that's, yeah. that's very heartening uh, to hear. Uh, Lizzie, you know, you chose to sort of adopt India and start and grow your startup here. Um, if you had to go back and do it all over again, would you still choose Bangalore? Would you choose London? What would you do differently? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I hope India has adopted me. I haven't adopted <laughs> India. I oh, um, have. I would. <laughs> thank you. I would absolutely do it all again, uh, and probably do it again with even more passion. I'm. I'm just so grateful for the opportunity set that this country has provided over the last five years. It's been absolutely in excess of what we could have ever imagined. And I'm not just talking about the digital journey and the incredible emerging of this demanding consumer that we are seeing in this country and we are excited to serve. But I'm also talking about the ecosystem and especially, I guess, as the topic today, how favorable an ecosystem we actually have towards young women if you really you know have a dream and have a passion and i hope this panel here today shows what can be achieved um and even you know for women who who look like me and might not look like the norm and might be a bit of a, an outsider the fact that we've managed to achieve what we have in a relatively short place of time i think really proves what a supportive ecosystem we have now built in this country today 
would you agree with that uh, vinita i mean uh, you know starting and scaling a d2c brand sugar cosmetics take a, take us through the ride i mean uh, again has it been easier for you now would it would this have been possible say 5 to 10 years ago is there more acceptance a better network that you have today right uh, so hi firstly very excited to be on the super inspiring panel and uh, i think like dr geeta said she's an accidental entrepreneur i think I, I, if i were to describe myself in two words it would be struggling entrepreneur it's been a long <laughs> journey since i first started up like maybe 13 years back uh, not in this space uh, you know uh, d2c uh, brand sugar we launched in 2015 and uh, that time d2c wasn't uh, really trending right. uh, but we wanted to create a new age beauty brand for young millennials we thought that there was a big opportunity uh, to create a brand for the younger women and um, in the last 5 years uh, you know as it turns out uh, the adoption of e-commerce the uh, real prevalence of social media has made it easier for brands which stand for very good products um to actually be more accessible so now we're available in more than 10000 retail points as well as online and we have a net revenue run rate of about 200 uh, crore so uh, when i look think about it i think today is like a great time to be an entrepreneur um, the ecosystem has really evolved and especially for women so you know when i look back and you know because we were talking about women here um when i look back at like 7 to 8 years uh, ago the situation that was compared to today i think some of the things that we really grateful for is that uh, you know there isn't uh, people think about uh, before saying things like we don't invest in women entrepreneurs because you know they're priorities change their ambitions change once they decide to have kids and um i used to run a b2b company before that so uh, about 7 to 8 years back there was a lot of uh, uh, you know a uh, uh, covert uh sexism as well as uh, some level of harassment when you were dealing with clients i think there's a lot more awareness around that and i think there are such amazing role models like Lizzie and Dr. Geeta for other women to now start up. So I think definitely in terms of uh, you know the conversation in the ecosystem, the support that VC funds are now giving to women entrepreneurs by having cohorts that are dedicated to them and uh, you know trying to increase the number of women both as VCs and uh, in companies that are being funded. I think it is a much better time. Uh, just hoping for the funding numbers, the amount of funding that comes to women to increase, uh, and I hope it's going to happen in the next. Seven to eight years, right? You know, <laughs> Vinita, I'm wondering if your experience as a marathoner has really helped you sustain the struggle. You know, you mentioned because it has been like running a marathon for you over ten <laughs> years, fifteen years, and you know, you finally sort of seen validation. Yeah, I'm a marathoner. Lizzy is an even faster marathoner, so you have a lot of marathoners <laughs> on this panel. Uh, and I have to say that you know, in marathon, there's the biggest taboo word is this thing called DNF, which is did not finish. So we're very scared of quitting. Like no matter even if you're dying, you're crawling to the finish <laughs> line. We're so scared of quitting that you know, even if the company is not going anywhere, you're like, I would rather pivot yeah. than shut it down. So I think it helps. On a lighter <laughs> note, if we need the stance on cosmetics, we know who to turn to. But uh, you know, you mentioned the funding. Uh, 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 I mean, you mentioned the funding that that is certainly something that we have to talk about. So, Dr. Geeta, Lizzie, again, in terms of funding, has it changed? Uh, do you still counter very unusual questions for women founders? Is that element of bias still there? or you know are people more aware are they are they more self aware and wary of asking such things because the next thing you know someone might just post this on linkedin or twitter and you know could create a lot of reputational damage so how how is that changed in terms of the perception uh, dr geeta and then lizzie can go next yeah so um like uh, mita mentioned i think uh, you know the investors uh, are more uh, friendly today to both women and men to uh, less num- less uh, discretion i would say between the two discrimination um whereas um, of course there are some tough questions there are some small unsaid things i guess right you know for example because we were um, uh, going on this uh, big big challenge of uh, trying to change the way cancer is detected and cancer is like kind of is you know decision making that that to ai making that decision so there are several risks uh, obviously in what we are uh, working on and what we were at least uh, imagining to work on 4 years ago so the amount of confidence that investors uh, have on uh, 
on 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 the founders you know in order to um you know in, in the confidence that uh, the founders will beat beat the challenge or whatever right so that level i guess um, was varying between one uh, you know investor to another um in fact one investor did come in and say that you know uh, you know it's it's a so such a big challenge and uh, i i don't see uh, this uh, happening uh, you know on the next 10 years or whatever something like that right so 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 it's i don't know whether it's anything to do with women or you know in general that was a fee but um you know i guess there is a small inkling of the the gender out there but apart from that you know i didn't i have not find, found any discrimination between uh, you know uh, male or female founders or whatever also we were like two female founders so it was like better better on women aspect of it so yeah but as uh, again vinita mentioned there is a lot of support in the ecosystem now right you know particularly mm-hmm. there if there is uh, there is there's actually like an award for women entrepreneur and uh, there are cohorts where you know you get mentored and and so on and so forth so those things are extremely welcome uh, i would say right you know so and and the third and last but not the least is uh, what happens when there are lots of people and very few women right uh, we also get advantage in sense of uh, if uh, investor we meet investors in a big conference they remember us you know <laughs> <laughs> there's less number of people i'm not saying we should have more obviously we need to have more fun in the conferences but uh, you know that's uh, uh, the additional piece i can say yeah, yeah. So i, I would Lizzie, echo... you want to take us to your own experience sure no and i i want to echo exactly what vinita said i think what has happened is the explicit bias may have become more subtle right so we don't face it in meetings but i think we all know from looking at the data uh, and i don't mean just the data in terms of you know who gets funded in terms of gender ratio but just look at who's making the decisions right there are still far far fewer women in positions of decision making and that will take a long time to structurally change i think the good news is in the last couple of years we have certainly seen you know much much less of any of that obvious explicit bias um and most importantly and i think venita proves this really well as well the numbers start to speak for themselves as you scale up so i think it's a challenge in the early days when you need that buy in and we had a huge challenge because we were two women trying to tackle a problem in one of the most masculine domains right we were trying to build a lending business we would need collections teams and i do remember on day 1 yeah. the first investor we pitched said how will you manage men in india which i took to be a very <laughs> offensive and racist question but basically <laughs> what we then went out and did prove it with data and execution right so we built a great team we had fantastic results and now honestly the data and the quality of our team speaks for itself so touch wood we have never had any challenges as to where it comes to sort of gender bias but i do think it's a topic we need to talk about more and all of us women here need to be more vocal more present and act as role models not just to inspire young women but to make investors comfortable that we're doing a good job and to create role models in the ecosystem right vinita was it helpful having a male co-founder i mean he also happened to be uh, your husband but did that kind of help in battling some of this perception or bias that you know in invariably tends to creep in during some of these conversations yeah so definitely i've had it easier than uh, you know the, this two sets of uh, two women co-founders that uh, geeta dr geeta and lizzy uh, bring to the table uh, it's definitely easier uh, in fact i remember back in 2012 13 i had like you know there was an angel investor who mentioned that uh, it makes sense for us to put in the money only if we know that koshik is going to be coming in full time because i had started it while koshik was still working at mckinsey so um today i can't even imagine anybody echoing anything like that or saying this explicitly in a meeting but you know at that time it was okay for them to say that um having yeah, said sure that you there is a, yeah then i'm sure you won't let them get away with such a statement today as well as well absolutely absolutely i think you know when i look back at my engineering days and you know some of my internships the kind of things we let men get away with 
it really helps to uh, you know have a community now where we can discuss this and we actually have like this uh, women entrepreneur group where every time somebody puts out something sexist we discuss it and i think next on that should be uh, racism um now i'm really amazed to hear lizzy's yeah. story there uh, but having said that uh, you know chandra surprisingly there was both something which i didn't expect there was a bias against uh, a couple founders uh, because of mm. the fact that the same logic that you have that uh, you know a, like women won't be able to build large teams because 45 year old men won't be okay with reporting to women uh, especially if they're younger than them or in these case they're not the same uh, race um in you know, there was also this reaction that you know as couples uh, it would like seem like this family business and uh, you know it would be harder for you to build large teams with respect to you because um, you wouldn't be considered as two professional individuals but a couple that is leading the company uh, so i think we did face some of that you know very very large mark key funds have given us feedback saying that you know we are more we don't want to invest in couple entrepreneurs that again i think especially in d2c if i look at like the number of big brands that are doing pretty well so many of them now have couple founders and just like women i think uh, you know the more role models that there are the more uh, you know a vcs think that it's okay that my company is not my investment will not go um, uh, go down to the dogs because this couple will decide that you know they won't be able to scale it and second is that others are okay to start and you know those uh, res- uh, the hesitation that they have that would it work or not uh, they are able to see some role models who actually uh, paved the way for them right um interestingly of course i think k ganesh and meena ganesh are you know a prominent example of couple who started up so many ventures and they've now sort of become serial investors so i guess that's a that's a great uh, thing to take uh, inspiration from but uh, lizzy you know in terms of the post pandemic world the post covid world has it leveled the playing field to some extent for women because you know you can sort of maybe have fundraising meetings over zoom or you can have women work anywhere in the world because of remote workplaces so you know that networking mm. or the cozy club element may have come down a bit do, do you think that could perhaps be an advantage yeah i look i think it's complicated it's a double edged sword right so i think what you're seeing at the moment is a lot of women saying huh we always told you that work could be more flexible and finally <laughs> just because men have to experience that right <laughs> they're sort of jumping on the bandwagon so without you know being too silly about it it's it's great that we've moved towards more flexibility more awareness and that's the good piece the negative piece and honestly we're seeing it even in our own team is that when women work from home they have a very different experience of men working from home and i think this oh, is yeah. where we all need to work more constructively to break stereotypes not just in the workplace and i i say this all the time you know equality in the workplace begins when we get more equality in the home and unfortunately a lot of working women at the moment are working harder than they ever have to juggle the requirements of the home with their day job and their family are not necessarily seeing that division that they see more naturally with men and it's up to us as employers and again as kind of role model women in the space to create that division one thing i um train the women in my team on is just talk about your work around the dinner table with your family make it something that's so important to you and make it something that is a passionate commitment from the whole family and then they'll start to respect that that time is really precious to you um but i'm definitely thinking it's a little bit more complicated than just to say yay remote work is good for women not so clear i i completely agree and kids you know they kind of instinctively turn to the mom than dad yeah. uh, even if you have both of them uh, working from home so um, yeah. I, i think a lot of women or working moms are just exhausted <laughs> globally but uh, uh, dr kita coming to you you know you spoke about your own entrepreneurship journey how you started up to solve a problem that you saw very close up but do you think entrepreneurship can also be a means to sort of closing the pay gap and you know bringing change i completely agree with you that uh, you know entrepreneurship uh, doesn't always have to start with your own experience or experience around you but typically what happens is if the entrepreneur sees a gap and really feels for it passionately wants to solve it right and that is where the that's what the best buck would be right you know so essentially 
figuring out a problem that is so critical uh, for the society or for yourself to solve it, right? And then going after it, uh, you know, with, with complete perseverance is 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 what I found uh, many people do and uh, do well, right? And that is what keeps you going because there's lots of ups and downs and marathon uh, aspects that were mentioned before. So for all of this, you need to be believing in that uh that the problem requires a solution and that you are able to get to that, right? And you can obviously change the society by doing uh, going to, uh, doing that kind of a thing, yeah. I don't know whether that right. answers. Um, no, 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 it did. Uh, fi fi final couple of questions, really, Benita. In terms of the leadership style uh, that women have to bring, you know, as a founder, as an entrepreneur, there are some people who feel uh, that, you know, they have to play to their natural instincts, perhaps bring empathy, bring compassion. So what is your own take on that? Or, you know, is this very subjective? Again, it depends on each entrepreneur. I think uh, the beautiful thing that I've seen in not just uh, our organization, but a lot of other women-led organizations is that, you know, this whole like alpha culture of being like very aggressive during meetings and, uh, you know, free flowing language and a lot of pressure um, and, uh, you know, four targets, which is uh, where people scream at each other, et cetera. Um, you know, because people are more restrained and there is genuinely like this fear that, you know, when you cross the line, there might be a, a you know, you get might get pulled up by HR. I think it the what it's led to is that overall the culture is just off more camaraderie, more empathy. And I think one of the things as women um, that we're able to do, one of the biggest reasons why people quit small organizations is they don't understand expectation setting and they don't understand where the company is going, the mission of the company. I think uh, women leaders by nature, what I've seen is over communicate. You know, they have more conversations with their team members of, you know, what's not going right, what's going right, rather than having to put up this brave face, uh, which a lot of male entrepreneurs are compelled to do and uh, what that you know that makes us vulnerable but that also helps the organization stay in touch with what's going on and i think um covid was one of those times where as a company i think we benefited a lot from over communicating where we are how right, messed up it is. Right. You know, many times where we did not have the answer to all the questions uh you know we would just talk about that freely and i think that's you know that's really helped us bring the team together in a crisis and you know once you go through a crisis you really feel much stronger. So I think expectation um, uh, of what is expected from uh, uh, from the employee, as well as communication, where the company is going, what the mission is, um, I think all of that, uh, as well as empathy, can build a very different culture. And I, I think you know we can build strong organizations on the basis of our own leadership styles, rather than having to adapt to that alpha culture. Right. I'm going to end by asking each one of you to perhaps share one message for aspiring women entrepreneurs, women leaders who may be watching you on March 8th or even before that. Um, you you, would, you want to start, Lizzie? Oh, uh, sure. OK. Um, I would say the most important quality to be a female entrepreneur is authenticity. So exactly to Vanita's point about leadership, to get the best out of your team, they must trust you. Same with your investors, same with your business partners. And the only way to build trusted relationships, I believe, is to be really genuine and really authentic. So just be yourself, believe in your passionate mission, um, and go out there and get it done. Right, do, do, Dr. Geeta? Yeah, the last bit. Believe in what you want to solve. Keep the passion going. You'll find ways of solving it. Don't lose confidence. Don't lose uh, faith in yourself. You can do it. In fact, women are better in multitasking. Actually, women can be better entrepreneurs. Okay. Vinita, the marathon. Yeah. I Yes, I, I'd just like to add, um, ask for help. Like Lizzie mentioned, we all need help yeah. at home. Um, and sometimes we just, you know, feel it's our duty to do more. But, you know, sometimes just asking for help um, and at work as well. Um, I think one of the biggest difference uh, where, because of uh, which leads to pay gap is that women don't ask for uh, uh, support as well as don't ask for like a pay raise. Um, I would say, you right. know, ask for help, speak ask up. for what you deserve and speak up and uh, you know, we're definitely going to be unstoppable. Right. On that very inspiring note, I'm so glad 
we decided to call this dreams unlimited because that's what all three of you represent thank you very much for joining us on money control and hopefully this will inspire hundreds and thousands of women to start up like you have done thank you very much for joining us thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so thank much you.